Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab, and what I got here is the Sony A mount 70 to 400 millimeter f4 to 5.6 G2 SSM lens. I'll be reviewing this lens using the Sony A99 II, and I will be putting this lens through the paces, including lab testing, action photography, video testing, and tons and tons of real world use as well. So let me just go over some of the key features really quick and then we will get on with the hands-on portion of this review. We're looking at $21.98 US for the cost. It weighs 3.3 pounds, so it's fairly heavy, 1,500 grams. This lens has no optical steady shot. That's the really the biggest negative with this lens, in my opinion. It doesn't have optical steady shot included, unfortunately. It's got a 77 millimeter filter thread, which is nice, relatively small, considering the size and zoom range of the lens and max aperture of f4. It has a nine blade circular diaphragm. It's got a removable rotating tripod collar. It's dust and moisture resistant construction. The minimum focus distance is 1.5 meters or approximately 4.9 feet. It's got an electronic focus range limiter as well as three focus hold buttons. It has the killer supersonic wave AF motor which allows for that unbelievable fast focus tracking. It's got the nano AR lens coatings which is a really nice feature. It has 18 elements in 12 groups as far as all the glass inside this lens. It's got two extra low dispersion elements. And if you're going to use this on a crop factor camera like the a77 II, for example, you're looking at an effective range of 105 to 600 millimeter. All right, so just wanted to give you the hands-on with the 70 to 400 millimeter G2 lens. And here's the lens hood. It's really big. It has this cool door on the side here so you can adjust when you have it mounted properly. You can actually turn your polarizer filter and stuff without taking the lens hood off. That's what this door is for. And here you have your switches here. You got AF. MF for manual focus, autofocus, and then you have a focus limiter here, so you can limit the focus. We're looking at the front of the lens, and it comes out really far, like so. It's got a pinch style cap here, so it's nice and easy to put on. Now, let me just show you the back. I've been using this for like two weeks now, so there's a little bit of dust on it. Sorry about that. So looking at it from the back, you can see the excellent quality and you can see actually the whole lens assembly inside moving as you zoom it out. But it's all metal and uh, really, really well made. Alright, so notice here how we have this knob for the lens collar and support here so you can mount it to the tripod and you actually it's much more balanced this way as opposed to mounting the tripod to the bottom of the camera and then having this heavy lens all that load going to the you know tripod mount on the camera it's cool because this loosens and tightens so you can just loosen this up and then you can turn your camera into portrait mode like so if you want or you can put it back like so and it actually has like little notches so you know when you're getting it to the right spot it just kind of locks in there for you the tripod collar actually comes off too if you just loosen it and you keep rotating it it'll actually slide off. It'll come off the back of the lens if you want to take it off for some reason, just so you know. So they did a really good job designing that. And this has a lot of tightening to it, so it's not going to loosen up accidentally. Also worth noting is the focus hold buttons. There's one on the side and there's one on the top here. Now the focus is very smooth and buttery, and it also has the screen on the top there for the focus distance, you can see here. So now the zoom is right here, and you just turn it to zoom out. Now it's such a long zoom throw that I find I'm having to do like multiple, you know, like I'll do one, then the other. So what I end up doing is when I'm hand holding it, I end up grabbing one here and then one hand here and one hand on the camera and I twist both at the same time. Let me show you what I mean. So what I end up doing is I just grab one and grab the other and I twist both of them together and that's how I'm getting the zoom in like one swoop, you know, and then I'll just put it back up to my eye. So I'll just go zoom in, zoom out like that. So I'm kind of using the camera as leverage to help twist it. Um, that seems to work best for me. And I put my hand under the tripod mount. And sometimes I'll turn the tripod mount at a little bit of an angle so it's over here. And then I'll get a little bit better hand positioning. So you can see the thumb toggles are right where you want them to be. And then if you have it in portrait mode, it's going to be like this. So you would use the other thumb one like so. So in hand it feels pretty good. Like I said, I was a little bit lighter than I was expecting it to be, but um, you know, it's still a pretty beefy lens for weight-wise, no doubt about it. It feels really good on the A99 II though. All right, so here's a quick zoom test in the lab, 70 to 400.
All right, so I just want to show you quickly an aperture run at the minimum focus distance. So I'm approximately 1.5 meters away from this screw here, zoomed in to 400 millimeter. Here's f5.6, 6.3, f8, f11, and f16. Now I'll just go back to f5.6 and I'll zoom in here so you can see the detail, and I'll go through them again. There's f6.3, there's f8, there's f11, and there's f16. And you can just see when zoomed in all the way like this how buttery the background is, especially at the wider apertures. Alright, so these are all raw files, and I just wanted to show you here the only thing that I applied in Lightroom to, for as far as an adjustment goes, is this tone curve. Okay, so I just put a medium contrast tone curve on there. And you can see all it did was take away some of the flatness. Okay, that's all it did. So just to let you know, that's what I added. Uh, otherwise, they're raw. I didn't apply any sharpening. I didn't apply any lens correction or any of that. I'll show you what the lens correction does in a minute after I go through these quick. All right, so this is 70 millimeter. And I just am wide open f4.0. I just wanted to show you what kind of center sharpness you get and it's phenomenal on this lens. Also notice the purple fringing. There's a little tiny, tiny bit here on this screw, but other than that, it's pretty much non-existent. I don't see any fringing at all other than that. So corner sharpness here, it's a little bit soft in the corner. No doubt about that at wide open. So let's stop down here to f5.6, and you can see it sharpens up quite a bit. Not all the way to the corner, but it's pretty darn sharp. You can see the little helicopter toy here. When I stop down to f8 at 70 millimeter, it looks really sharp all the way to the corner. All right, now we're looking at 100 millimeter, and I just I'm just zooming in a little bit here, obviously, just to show you the critical focal lengths. And you can see again just how sharp, incredibly sharp it is in the center, wide open f4.5. And now I will scroll over to the corner here. And you can see the corners are just a little bit soft. So let's what it, see what it looks like at 5.6. And it sharpens up quite nicely. F8. And now it's pretty much razor blade sharp all the way to the corner. And again, there's like no purple fringing, no, none of that green stuff or anything like that here in the corners. So the optical quality is phenomenal on this lens in that regard. And it's also just incredibly sharp. I mean, look at the sharpness here at F8. I mean, that's that's like the definition of tack sharp. So moving on, F11, F16, and now we're zoomed in to 135 millimeter. Let's take a look at the corner. And the corner looks excellent. Very sharp, wide open at F4.5. And of course, the center is going to be very sharp on this dollar bill. You can see the detail. Let's stop it down, 5.6, 8.0, F11, F16. And here we are at 200 millimeter. I'll just zoom in on the dollar bill here. And you can see that's very good sharpness. And wide open at F5. All the way to the corner looks good. Now I'll stop it down. That's F5.6. That's F8. F11. F16. All right, now we'll move on to, should be 300 millimeter. Yep, this is 300 millimeter. I'll zoom in here, and you can see again just the sharpness and quality. An unbelievable detail combined with the 42 megapixel A99 II, of course. So here we are, stopped down to f6.3 and f8, f11, f16, and here we are at 400 millimeter. I'll just zoom in on the dollar bill here, 400 millimeter. And now you can start to see like the dye and the fibers of the dollar bill are starting to come out. Unbelievable quality here. 400 millimeter wide open, f5.6. I'll stop it down and we'll see it just crisp up that little bit. And yep, definitely. F8 will be probably just a little bit sharper. Very close. Just a tad sharper. Excellent. That's F11. F16. I just wanted to show you the distortion now, okay? 
So looking at, this is 70 millimeter, okay? And I also wanna show you the vignette. So what basically all I'm doing here is applying the lens correction. So let me get rid of this and scroll down. So all I'm doing here, you'll notice the lens correction is gonna be applied when I go to the virtual copy down below. So you could see how the checkbox is enabled there for the lens correction. So this image is without lens correction and this is with lens correction. So it pretty much fix, fixes the vignette and any distortion. So there's obviously no distortion at 70 millimeter, which is very impressive. Now, if I zoom into 100 millimeter, you're going to see some distortion. You'll actually see the image bow out. Watch this. See that? Let me uh, let me go to view, view options, view overlay. I want to show grid. All right, so there's the grid. And now if you look at the before and after, you can see a little more clearly the distortion when you have the grid up. See that? So that's a 100 millimeter distortion and vignette pretty much being fixed. Now this is 135 and you can see, and again, a little bit of a distortion there. All right, now let me show you what 200 millimeter looks like. So that's the correction. Not too shabby. Only a little bit there, 200 millimeter. And 300 millimeter, let's take a look at that. And again, only a very little bit of distortion there. And let's see what 400 millimeter looks like. And again, very little distortion. All right guys, so let's check out some real world photos. And if you look at the top left here, you will see the XF information. Uh, in case I don't mention it, you can see up here though, the shutter speed, the aperture, and the ISO. And I was using the Sony A99 II for these images. So let me just scroll through here. Here's a flower shot on the deck. Again, you can just see the color and clarity contrast. I did do minor adjustments on these in Lightroom. And by minor adjustments, you can check out my Lightroom uh, video editing raw files. I'll link it above. Now here's a flower shot and here's the inversion. So I just focused on the flowers in front. Then I focused on this flower here in the middle and the back. And when you zoom in, you could just see that unbelievable detail. Phenomenal. This lens really is amazing. I wish it had optical steady shot built in, but what are you going to do? Now these are just like leaf, you know, like vine kind of plants. And I focused on the group in the middle. And then now I focused on the ones in the front, just so you can see. Now this is just a zoom range run. So you can see what you get from the same distance. This is 70 millimeter. It's 100 millimeter. This is 200 millimeter. Now 300 millimeter, I move over to this tree on the left. And I'll just zoom in here. All these are razor blade sharp, guys. Razor blade sharp. Just look at the detail on this like birch tree. Looks like paper, the bark. Unbelievable. And the background is so buttery. Killer. Here's 400 millimeter, and again, f5.6, so this is wide open. So moving on, just blades of grass. And I just like the way that this came out. Some purple layering here, and again, detail is just phenomenal. And the out-of-focus areas, just beautiful, the way this lens renders. I absolutely love this lens. I'm really hoping, one of the main reasons I wanted to test this is because I'm going to test the 100 to 400 uh, GM lens for the mirrorless Sony cameras next. And I just wanted to compare it next to a full fledged pro grade, you know, lens like this. And this is a pretty large lens. So I just wanted to really see what kind of pure detail you get on a full frame, you know, regular size lens versus the smaller mirrorless lenses that Sony are pumping out. They tend to have more distortion. Corner sharpness tends to not be quite as good. They also tend to suffer from a little bit of purple fringing, more so than a large A-mount lens, uh, in my experience. So that's really the main reason I wanted to review this lens. And the sharpness is just unbelievable on this. Look at this, all the way across in this field area. I mean, just look at that detail. Now this is almost at the minimum focus distance here. And just some weird looking berries on the tree. And again, just this incredible sharpness. And just a couple of shots of Jace. He was in the sun, so I uh, dropped the exposure down a little bit here so I didn't blow the highlights too much. And here I let the exposure back up. Nothing special here. I just wanted to show you the depth of field fall off and the cool separation you can get with a uh, you know portrait style subject. 
and it, here's another just layering effect. I wanted to show you out of focus area in the very foreground, and then I focus like 20 feet away or so, and then the background, again, just butters out completely. And that's one of the huge advantages of using a lens with 400 millimeter like this on a full frame sensor format. This is what it gives you these incredible layering separation effects. That's one of my favorite things about using a telephoto lens for sure. And that's just another one. Here's a moon image. I already showed you this in the A99 II review, so you might have seen some of these photos if you watch that review. Sorry for the duplication here, but uh, you know I could only take so many photos. I really do have a lot more though to show you in uh, this review, taken with this lens. I skipped a lot in the A99 II review, and this is just a paw. This is actually hanging in my mir rear view mirror. Here's a couple more of Jace, and again you can see the sharpness. Very very impressive. And that background separation is just killer. This is a TIFF file, so I brought this one into Color Effects Pro. And, you know, I just burned in the edges a little bit more, added a little bit more punchiness to it, but really not too much. I didn't fix his face or anything like that. I didn't do skin smoothing or anything crazy like that. But here's the raw image, and this is the slightly edited version you can see here. There's another one. Such a good boy. Here's my car. I thought this one looked kind of cool. I was at 400 millimeter. Down at the basher kill here, just another layering effect here. I wanted to show the foreground at a focus, and then I focused on this bird feeder thing, the little birdhouse. And then you can see the background, you know, just falls off really nice. And this is just a piece of steel that's rusted and pitted, so you can see the incredible detail that this lens offers. And this is at f5.6, so wide open, guys. Color and clarity, really, really good. Here's just a landscape frame, 70 millimeter. Now here's just a uh, cattail, they call it. I wanted to show you the detail on this cattail, these fine, fine details. Here's another image you can see there. And another one, lots of detail. And here's another image, very similar frame. This is just a sign wild management <laughs> wildlife management area state land here's just a cattail that like exploded and i wanted to show you the detail of this thing so anybody that's worried about you know the resolution being too high on these newer you know sensors 42 megapixel they might think the lens can't handle the resolution that's clearly not the case i mean you could just see right here the lens can more than handle the resolution it's this cool green slime algae or whatever it is I don't know. I don't know if these were tadpoles or little fish, but pretty cool to see. Yeah, this is just a peel, like a weed, you know, with the background separated. I thought it looked cool being lit up by the sun. And this, I just wanted to show you the distance here. This is zoomed all the way in, 400 millimeter, and this is the highway I take to work, actually. So normally I get on this highway from my house, and then I drive, and I, I loop around. So I pass this Basherkill area every every time I go to work and then back home. So I catch it at sunrise and sunset. So that's largely why I always use this place for sample photos. It's just beautiful, and I happen to pass it every day. So at 400 millimeter, take a look at this house on top of the hill here. I don't know if somebody just built this, or if there's a driveway, or if it's just a cabin you got to hike to, or what. Looks like there's a boardwalk here going through the woods. But anyway, that's at 400 millimeter, and I wanted to show you that so you can compare it to this one, which is 70 millimeter. So here's that house again on the top of the hill. So you can see what that 400 millimeter gets you. It's quite a lot of zoom, you know? And this is just the woodchuck that lives by my house. And uh, he lives under the shed. So we've been throwing, like, you know, fruit. Instead of throwing it in the garbage and stuff, we'll throw it out there for this guy. And uh, he seems pretty friendly so far. Make sure we keep the kids away, though, you know? There he is. There he is standing. Look at his little hands. He's got, like, little fingers, you know, just kind of like we do. Here's Bones Jones. He was eyeing him up because... Uh, he doesn't, he barks at that uh, groundhog, so he was watching him. Here's Jace playing on the playground. That's just a picture of the wood. Yeah, so you can see here just the incredible detail. Another one of Jace. You can see him smiling, such a good boy. He turned three in August, so he's really starting to uh, mess with me now. He's getting old enough to know, like, make things up, things like that. There he is, chalk, having a good time my little buddy now uh, this is actually an hdr photo and uh it's at 70 millimeter i thought it looked pretty cool the way it came out it's just handheld 
Here's one of Layla, and this is another one. I just had her stand there so I can show you that layering depth of field that you can get. I love the way photos like this look. It really makes the subject pop and gives you that 3D effect, you know, so excellent for portrait work in particular. You know, I was pretty far from her, though. I was a good 50 feet away when I took these photos. I got her laughing, though. This is just an image quality sample photo, really. I just love the way that this thing looks. It looks cool hanging in the tree. You can actually see through this a little bit, so it creates these unusual effects. So you're actually seeing into the glass as well as the reflection on the outside of the glass. So it just gives you this weird perspective, you know, illusion type effect. This tree frog was hanging out in the tree, and it, it, I swear it looks like these things are smiling. He was like winking at me. I like the way this came out. It's a little noisy, ISO 5000. And this is just a depth of field fall off shot. I wanted to show the uh, lights on the railing, how they, uh, you know, how they go out of focus there. And this is zoomed in a little more. And this is just a glass table. This is just showing you that telephoto compression effect. I just, you know, focused on the middle of the table, and then you could see the foreground and then the background falling off there. And you could see all the balls, you know, all the little bouquet balls. It, it just looks cool. It's just a sample photo to show off what this lens is capable of. And this is zoomed in more on the lights. You can see now it just looks like a cool, colorful dance, I guess. And this is just the barbecue. It's actually the dials of the barbecue depth of field fall off shot and you can see the balls getting bigger 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 here's another one this is just a soda can just to, again to show you what how the highlights and uh you know shooting metal what what you kind of get this is like a brushed metal here's one of layla thinking about something she got covered in water from the water balloons this is just a weed in the grass and i was aiming downward and you could see i mean this thing only stuck up like maybe I don't know, a foot off the ground and zoomed into 400 millimeter, uh, you could see the background, which is the grass, just, you know, butters right out. So it, it, the 3D effect that you can get with a telephoto lens like this is phenomenal. And again, look at the detail. This is just a shot inside, handheld, one-tenth of a second. I just thought these clouds looked cool. Looked like an explosion or something. And then uh, I, I slowed the shutter down. I was using my variable ND filter, and uh, I slowed it down to one second to get this water flow effect. And I just like the way it's layering. You know, you got water flowing to the right here in the foreground, and then it's flowing, you know, down and to the right in the background. So Layla on her bike, I got a bunch of photos of her on her bike. I'm not gonna go through all of them, but this one here, I actually slowed the shutter down to 1 40th of a second just to try to get a little bit of a panning effect here. And you can see it worked out quite well. You can see the spokes and the wheels, you know, that motion is captured. It's a little bit soft, still not too bad, you know, it's like acceptably sharp for a uh, fun panning type shot. I'll just go through them quick so you can see. I'm not going to wait for them to load though. And it's just, they're all sharp, 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 sharp. Let me just zoom in on one of them so you can see. So you can see just how sharp they are. So make sure you go to the website, guys, and you'll see all these images. I'll, put, I'll upload all of them so you can see them all. Here's a couple more. And that's Layla riding her bike. And here's Layla playing basketball. Now these are raw files straight off the camera, so you can see they're quite flat. And again, I can add some punch to these just by clicking that preset. There she is dribbling again. I'll just add the punch preset. Boom. A couple more. These are all super sharp. I really like that one and that one there. There's a little bit of a punch and I'll just make it a little bit warmer. It looks a little bit cold. Somewhere right around there looks pretty good. All right, so I just want to go over these dog photos. And as you can see, I got a ton of them. So uh, if you want to see all these photos, just go to the website and you can check out every single one. But for this video review, I'm just going to show you the ones that I have three starred for now. Um, all the ones that are starred are, are super sharp, though. These are just the ones that I took a little extra time to edit. Um, not really edit, edit, but, you know, adjust here in Lightroom, add a little contrast and stuff. And you can just see the quality. Of a, of a running dog, you know, this lens is just phenomenal, totally capable of capturing the action when paired up with the A99 II in particular. Also, the A77 II would do a great job. The original A99 also do a great job. And this is Charlie, and you can see Chopper there in the background. Also note that fence in the background, how the fence is rendering. All right, this is the original image. This is an edited, okay? This is a really pretty dog. I can't remember the dog's name. And here's one with the tongue hanging out. <laughs> this is Charlie doing her trick. 
Here's another one of Charlie. Look at that face. And again, the clarity and sharpness is just unbelievable. See what I'm saying? Unbelievable. Another one. Guys, I know this video is getting long here, but I just want to go over some of these zoo photos. And I'm going to go through them quick here. And the information's on the top left if you want to see what the camera was set to for these images. And I'm just going to scroll through. So shooting through a fence and also what you can get uh, using this lens on the A99 II in particular. Some chickens, crazy looking birds at the zoo. This was actually at Space Farms. Be sure to check out my A99 review. Oh, this is just 100% crop of the creepy eye. I don't know what the heck was going on there. Here's just a cool looking duck. There's a turtle on the log. Oh, this is just a fur image. I want to show you the detail on that. So you could see the lens has no problem rendering the detail on the fur. There's the lion looking kind of angry. Now here's a tiger checking out the uh, brother coming down the way here. See how handsome he is. It's a pretty bird. Look at the color on this thing. I think it was a peacock or something. I'm not 100% sure. These are just cool looking foxes. They got the awesome, really awesome eyes, kind of like cat eyes. Ooh, this was a creepy rattlesnake in the snake pit. It was just scary, scary looking. These things just look mean, like when you look at them. Unbelievable. But this one I edited a little bit just to bring out a little more detail. Here's the unedited version. And there's the tail on this thing. Just look at that rattle tail. Here's Jace posing against a tree here, getting a little drink. Thirsty boy. Here's one of my wife and Jace. Really like the way this photo came out. And notice here in the corners, the high contrast areas, there's no fringing whatsoever. There's Layla and Jace. Just a Kodiak bear. Really like the way this one came out. This is an actual groundhog of some sort. Bison at this zoo. They really stunk. I mean, unbelievable how bad they smelled. There's Jace getting some feed to throw for the animals. I just love the way that this lens renders. You see that? I mean, it's just it got that magic look, you know? This guy didn't really look too happy. But uh, the fur and the detail, I just love the way it came out. And here's another angle. Here's the family feeding the animals here. Yeah, just look at the detail on this llama and the fence. You know, the fence fall off. I'll just zoom in so you can see the eyelashes. I mean, just look at that. Incredible, right? So this is what you get when you uh, purchase a lens like this, or you rent a lens like this, or you borrow a lens like this. You uh, you immediately know why, where the money goes. You're like, oh, that's why this is $1,000 more. You know what I'm saying? See how sharp that bird is? And here we got just a silo. I'm zoomed in to 120 millimeter here. Just wanted to fill the frame up to, uh, you know, show you some more detail. As you can see, the detail is just absolutely phenomenal. 70 millimeter, just a snapshot, a couple snapshots. Going through the museum museum areas here. See all the old cars and stuff. There's the kids. These are just snapshots. This is looking down at a car, just showing the uh, logo there. This is low light, so the ISO is quite high, 16,000 in this particular frame. And this, I just wanted to show you what kind of separation you can get using the hood ornaments in particular. I really like the way this hood ornament looks. What an awesome design, huh? And here's a model plane hanging in the ceiling, 135 millimeter really have a good amount of range to zoom in and get some nice detail. Here's Layla playing with this old piano and you can see here that I, I took it down the hallway so you can see the depth of field and this particular shot was at f7.1 and they actually had the old jail cell there I guess the original Sussex jail cell and we all got in there for a fun photo. Michelle took a picture. This is just the old schoolhouse here. Just figured I would take a quick shot of that. And this is a copperhead snake. You could see the fence that I'm shooting through here. And to my right, uh, my wife and Jace were taking a quick break while I was at the snake pit. So I just turned and took a few photos of those guys. Like this one came out good. And this was Parker, as I mentioned in the A99 review. He was an extremely knowledgeable snake pit guy. This is just a Space Farm Eagle. I think this is some kind of cast. 
steel or something or metal not 100 percent sure how they made this but the detail was really good and you can see just the highlights that there's zero fringing you know there's nothing the the optical quality of this lens is phenomenal and i really think that has something to do with the size of the lens too you know we'll see when i get the 100 to 400 gm lens in my hands and i'll really be able to tell you know if the size makes that much of a difference we'll see and here's another angle of the copperhead creepy looking snake Here's one of Layla, and I just liked the way that the hair was backlit and the static electricity <laughs> was causing her hair to, to do that. I just thought it looked great. And again, this lens has that magic look, you know, it just it just has that like, it's really hard to describe because it's more of a look than anything, you know, it's not like sharpness necessarily, it's like a look. And this lens just has it, that that magic look, at least to my eye, you know, here's another one Michelle took. Not too bad. I think I'm going to edit this photo pretty soon. I kind of like the way it looks. Here's a raw file. It's just slightly edited here, but not much. We can see the full frame here. Some tigers. Shooting through more fences. My wife took these shots. And here's another one. It actually focused on the fence for this particular frame. just wanted to show you what that looked like. And here's a few more lion shots. I'm just going to scroll through these quickly. Really like the way that one came out. And there's another one. Incredible. Here's another side profile view. And here's the two lines meeting one another. They had to pass one another, but they couldn't fit. So the big one on the left had to back up. Some kind of deer looking through the fence there. Here's Layla. We actually rented this old school carriage push thing for Jace and uh, he really didn't like it so Layla sat in it for a minute <laughs> thought it was a funny picture and here's one of Layla I just wanted to show you this because you could see the background fall off quite good in the distance there it's a pretty good example of what you can do there and here's Jace just feeding some kind of deer he's got his hand through the fence like an animal look at him and this was just a whole herd they were laying on the ground there together it looked like soaking up the rays and this was just a cool bird eye to eye with my wife here you can see my wife out of focus it looks like she's a lot closer than she actually is and you can just see the detail on this pretty bird it almost looks like the bird has makeup on too see the blue there you could probably jack up the color a little bit more on this image to uh, really make it pop yeah just bring out the blues a little more see that it's a little bit too much but whatever well, if you're a Sony A-mount camera user and you're looking for a telephoto super zoom lens, then this is a really, really good option. You're going to get maximum compatibility with the Sony cameras because it's a Sony lens. So the hybrid AF, for example, is going to work with this lens. It's not going to work with like a Tamron, that particular feature. Um, unfortunately, this doesn't have optical steady shot and the latest and greatest Sony lenses do, like the GM lens is designed for the mirrorless camera, for example. They have a 100 to 400 mil millimeter lens and that does have optical steady shot so it seems like this lens really needs an update um, to bring that feature on board so if Sony plans on continuing the A-mount camera line which I hope they do then eventually they're going to come out with a new version of this lens I, I'm guessing with optical steady shot and probably some other features um, you know just better lens coatings for example things like that so but at the end of the day guys I, I had a great time using this lens and as you can see that that telephoto range really gives you that layering uh, ability for portrait work and you know just reaching far subjects on the sports field it, it's a really good option in that regard so again it's 21.98 us or approximately 2200 dollars not exactly cheap but you do get a top quality product if you're looking for any lenses you got the sony a-mount lens guide right here you can click here and here's the e-mount guide for the mirrorless cameras but right here under the a-mount guide if you click that and then just go to the a-mount sony You'll scroll down here and you'll see these are all the available lenses with the links for you and stuff like that. It's nice and convenient to have them organized like this in, in my mind. It just visually, it's just very easy to find exactly what you need. And here's the APS-C lenses. So these are the crop factor lenses. And then below that you have the Sigma. So you get their options. And then below that you'll have the uh, Tamron options. 
and so forth. And then there's even more below that, okay? So I just wanted to make you guys aware of that. And that is pretty much it for this review, guys. So I really hope you have a great day, and I hope you got what you were looking for. If there's any questions, comments, please feel free to leave them below. And also be sure to check below the video for links, sample photo galleries, and also the main written review. That'll all be below the video. That's about it. Have a wonderful day. I will catch up with you later.